binomial, meaning two, two outcomes. There are four things that need to happen for a distribution to be a binomial distribution. One, n identical trials. Two, each trial has only two possible outcomes, like on or off, yes or no. How does that Katy Perry song go? I wish I could remember. The probability of the outcomes remain constant from trial to trial, meaning that the probability doesn't change. And four. The trials are I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T, meaning that one trial does not affect the next trial. They are independent. Let's see an example. Here's three scenario. Let's determine whether or not they are a binomial experiment. The first, drawing three balls with replacement from a box that contains 10 balls with replacement. That means you draw a ball and you put it back. You draw a ball, you put it back. You draw a ball, you put it back. Six of the balls are red, four of the balls are blue. Is this a binomial experiment? Well, what's the chance that you draw a red ball? It's six out of 10. Then you take that and you put it back in the bag. You pull another one. It's six out of 10. You take that, you put it back. Now there's still six balls in there. So then you draw another one. 10 balls in there, six of them are red. So then you pull another one and you put it back. It's still six out of 10. The probability stays the same from trial to trial. How many trials are there? There's three because you draw three balls. Are they independent of each other? Yeah, the probability doesn't change. And if I draw a red ball this time, it doesn't affect whether or not I draw a red ball next time because it's with replacement. Then there was one last constraint. Are there only two possible outcomes? Yes, because the ball is either red or blue. So is this a binomial probability experiment? Uh-huh. Next example, this time same sack. This time, not replacing the ball without replacement, meaning you pull a ball and you put it in your pocket. Then you pull a ball and you put it in the pocket. There are th still three trials, but this time the probability is changing from trial to trial. Like with that bag, you pull a ball, it's red. The chance of that happening was six out of 10. Now you put it back in your pocket, there's one less ball in that bag. So wait, what does that mean? The chance of drawing a red ball next time is five red balls out of nine balls. So the next probability is five ninths, which isn't the same as six tenths. So the probability changes. So this is not a binomial experiment. The next example, selecting a few households from New York City and observing whether or not they own stocks. When it is known that 28% of households in New York City own stocks. All right, so now are there n distinct trials? Maybe. What does a few mean? Not sure. If you're assuming that a few means countable and that that means that there is an n, then that is satisfied. So we'll just say, okay, there are n trials. Next, does each trial have only one of two outcomes? Uh-huh, either they own stocks or they don't. Does the probability change from trial to trial? No. Why? Because it's known that 28% of the population own stock. That's the probability of success. Next, are they independent of each other? I don't see why not. Whether or not you own stocks doesn't change whether or not your neighbor owns stocks. So we'll go with independent, satisfies all four binomial experiments.